Well, welcome to Real Talk with Jordan Riley, where the real talk does not come from me. It comes directly from God's Word. And before we get started today, please consider subscribing to our channel, giving this a thumbs up, and supporting what we do by going to realtalkwithjordan.com. On today's episode, we're going to be looking at so-called Christian YouTube channels that you need to unsubscribe from today, because not only are they deceived, but they are leading many in the wrong direction. So are you ready? Let's go. Did John MacArthur disqualify himself? I don't agree with Julie Royce on everything, but when it comes to this sort of stuff, she definitely will go through tens and thousands of hours of stuff and then find the, the thing he said about the thing and completely use it against John MacArthur. Mm -hmm. she, 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 got some beef. she got some smoke for John MacArthur. Rightfully so, by the way. There are some Christians who are so far gone that you got to fight fire with fire. And I think MacArthur's one of them. I think he has been, uh, he's shown a pattern of consistently doing things that are harmful. Well, there you have starting off our list, Ruslan. Ruslan is a charismatic clown who literally spends most of his time kind of clowning around, kind of entertaining you. But he doesn't do what the Bible says, nor do I think he has any much of an idea what the Bible has to say. Ruslan is also very arrogant. And if you look at him, I think he seriously lacks biblical discernment. And his channel is really more about, you know, sensationalizing thing rather than rightly dividing God's word. Watch this. Uh, Johnny Mac doesn't have to respond to Michael Brown. It doesn't, the, Johnny Mac doesn't have to respond to this or Michael Brown. Okay, Tyler, sweet, man, cool. That's just, I mean, that again, not responding says a lot. Not responding is a response, by the way. Not responding is a response, especially when someone's more educated than you. <sighs> yeah, I said it. Mm-hmm. Somebody who has an actual doctorate degree, not an honorary doctorate degree, is saying, I call cap on your nonsense. Yeah, you know, all this stuff you said about charismatics, mm, we call cap on that. And then you're like, and you don't say nothing? That's kind of, you know, I don't know, man. You, you can think that's cute. I think that's weak, in my opinion. Now, I want to say this before we go too far into this episode, and that is just because someone has a YouTube channel, just because someone has tons and tons of subscribers and has nice artwork and thumbnails and uses a couple Bible verses, does not mean they are from God. We have to use biblical discernment. We have to test everything against Scripture before we go forward, okay? That's important. Because here's the thing, if you look at Ruslan, he violates God's Word. He partners and has many false teachers on his program. That's a violation of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11. Don't partner with the deeds of darkness, but expose them. No, he doesn't do that. Also, he affirms many false charismatic uh, practices and doctrines like tongues, being slain in the spirit, oh, you know, and prophecy. Again, Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 through 9 is clear that if we teach things that go against what Jesus and the apostles taught, we are under God's curse. And also, Ruslan slanders men of God, like John MacArthur, but yet he affirms people like Joel Osteen, Michael Brown, and Greg Laurie. Number two is Service Christie, aka Joshua Chavez. Now, this man is pure evil. He makes a living off of tearing down men of God and telling half truths and making up lies about them. This violates Exodus chapter 20, verse 16 Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Sadly, he has a large following who will literally fight for him tooth and nail. They'll defend him about everything else. They think he walks on water. It's really sad. And I believe they do not know God's word either. Here's what Chris Roseborough had to say about Service Christi, a.k.a. Joshua Chavez. Watch this. Josh, you need to wake up. You need to grow up. You clearly do not know how to handle God's word, and your calling me a hypocrite is actually slanderous and sinful. You need to repent. You're being nonsensical and naive, and you're refusing to make the actual distinctions that God's word makes regard regarding separation. So saying I'm a hypocrite because I don't rebuke John MacArthur because you've accused him of, and found him guilty of promoting Rick Warren and Beth Moore because of his association with John Piper. Again, the issue is not me. The issue is you. Now, if you look at his channel, and I have seen tons of episodes, this is really all it's about. He tries to call out 
every solid Bible teacher that he can find. He wants to discredit them. He wants to destroy their reputation and malign their character. Who does that sound like? Yes, that sounds like Satan. That's exactly what Satan wants to do. So I'm telling you right now, please unsubscribe from Service Christie because Service Christie is twisted. He needs to repent and be saved and shut his channel down. Number three, Dr. Michael Brown. Now, Dr. Brown is someone that too many people have given a pass to. And on the outside, he seems like a nice old man who's rightly dividing God's word. No, he's not. He's someone who twists God's word and he endorses, affirms, and promotes many false teachers. Watch this. I'm holding in my hands a brand new book by Pastor Bill Johnson titled, God is Good. He's Better Than You Think, has a forward by Pastor Robert Morris, and the opening pages, it's kind of a who's who of charismatic leaders from around the world commending this book and commending Bill Johnson. He is one of the most respected and loved leaders in the charismatic movement. And here's Dr. Brown going even so far as to saying that Todd White is his friend and is a man of God. Dr. Brown, I am so thankful for you to be able to talk to me today and to be able to share. If, if I ever have any questions, you're my go-to. I always call you. I'm like, help me, you know, and you've been so gracious with me. And I just am so thankful for you, for what you do. Well, my, my joy to be here for you, man. My joy. Thank you so much. So um, I had made a video a while back and uh, I, I forget even the setting or the context of it, but it was on the, the scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Um, I've, I've got the Amplified here. I've got the Passion. I've got the, I've got the, uh, the New King James with the New King James. And if you think that wasn't bad enough, Michael Brown has gone on the record many times saying that people like Kenneth Copeland and Sid Roth, who is on his show plenty of times, Todd White and Heidi Baker are good friends of his. No, what is wrong with this, you guys? Second John chapter one, verses nine through 11 is very clear that when it comes to false teachers, which those four people that I just mentioned are clearly false teachers, they're prosperity pimps and wolves in sheep's clothing, that we're not to offer them a hello, not offer them a greeting, not welcome them into our house, have nothing to do with them. Also, if you remember, there was a false revival in Brownsville down in Florida about 25 or so years ago, and it had nothing to do with God. Yet, Michael Brown was a major player there. He was there many times, and you could see videos of him going, fire, fire, you know, knocking people over, trying to slay him in the spirit. Again, there's not one verse in the Bible that says being slain in the spirit is biblical anywhere. Again, people fell to their face in worship before Jesus. They weren't knocked on the head and fell backwards. See, Michael Brown is a train wreck. Yes, I said it. And he does teach some good truth, but he mixes it with error. And speaking of mixing truth with error, we come to number four, and that is Alan Parr. Now, I've already done a video on Alan, so I'm not going to go through all Alan's stuff. You can watch that on your own time. But I want you to know that Alan continues to go off the deep end. He continues to affirm false teachers. And he teaches a lot of unbiblical nonsense. Like here he is in this upcoming clip. He's telling us that Joel Osteen is a solid man of God. Because why? He has a website and a mission statement that's solid. <laughs> what? I mean, if I'm going to throw out some names, you know, I'll probably... I... And I, well, let me be careful with that because even someone like Joel Osteen, mm -hmm. I don't agree with prosperity theology. I wish that he would challenge people in mm -hmm. the areas of sin. I wish he wouldn't preach a cotton candy gospel. I wish that if I actually went to his church, I'd be challenged mm -hmm. in areas of purity, holiness, mm -hmm. and, and sanctification, and all that stuff. But I'm going to be honest. And somebody, some of you are here listening, you're going to fight me for this, right? But I'm going to be honest. If I go to his, if, if I go to his website, mm -hmm. And he adheres to all of the non-negotiable tenant yep. core beliefs of the Christian faith, yep. the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the inerrancy of scripture, the deity of Christ, mm -hmm. all these different things, right? Uh, the Trinity and all that stuff. It's hard for me to label him as a false teacher mm -hmm. when he is saying, this is how you can be saved. You need to be saved. Mm -hmm. And we want to be a church who's going to help you become saved. Right? Wow. I'm shocked. I'm not surprised, but I'm shocked. But look at this. This is why Alan has over a million subscribers and they keep climbing. 
It's not because Alan teaches the word of God. It's not because Alan calls people to repent. No, he sugarcoats things. He waters it down. He tells people what they want to hear. This is Alan's full-time job. He makes money, a lot of money off his channel, but he affirms major false teachers like Tony Evans and Stephen Furtick, Priscilla Shire, all these con artists, all these clowns, he affirms, oh, you know, just, just you know, chew on the, the meat, but spit out the bones. That's not biblical. But again, that's what Alan does. And that's how he keeps people happy. He keeps, he plays the middle of the road so people stay on his channel, which again comes down to the almighty dollar. This leads me to number five, Mike Winger. Mike, if you don't know about him, he is a former Calvary Chapel pastor which is a problem in itself because Mike is an Arminian, which is false theology right there. That says that we have something and we play a role in our salvation. It's like us and God working together synergistically to be saved. <laughs> no, that's nowhere found in scripture. Scripture is a monogistic work of God, period. Jesus made that clear in John chapter three, verses three through eight, and a host of scriptures all throughout the Bible. It's God's will, not ours, that we're saved. Also, Mike affirms many false teachers and calls them saved, which they're not. People like Bill Johnson and Todd White and Joel Osteen. Now, I know what you're thinking because he just made recently in the last number of months a, a video about Bethel Church and Bill Johnson. Now, let me affirm that yes, he did do that, but here's the problem. If Mike truly believed what he said in that video, then he would take down the other one he made four years ago that has over a million views, okay? Where he said that Bill Johnson is saved and Bill Johnson and, and Chris Valentin, the prophet, are men of God and people at Bethel are Christian. He's learned a lot from Bill Johnson. Lies, 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 more lies, okay? So Mike, if you believe what you said in this recent thing and are so critical of, of Bethel, then take down the old video because you're confusing people and I believe you're lying to them. Because which is it? We don't know. Which leads me to my next point. When you look at what Mike teaches, and he, he, people ask him a lot of questions and he answers them on his shows. And a lot of times you're gonna hear Mike say, I don't know. Someone asked him the other day, you know, can you lose your salvation? He hemmed and hawed and kind of threw a couple Bible verses out there. But at the end, he's like, I don't know. <laughs> Come on, Mike. Come on, man. You're supposed to be a pastor. The Bible you know, clearly says in 2 Timothy 2.15 that we're to rightly divide the word of God. And let me be very clear. I know the answer. You absolutely cannot lose your salvation. Scripture's clear all across the board, but especially in John chapter 10, verses 27 through 30. Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. Ephesians 1.4. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14, I can just keep going. The Bible is very, very clear. See, Mike is a nice guy, you know, and he says some nice things, but he mixes in truth with error, and that's a problem. Also, if I could be very honest, I believe that Mike exaggerates things. If you listen to him, it is, his programs are one to two hours long, and he always seems to say, you know, I spent 60 hours and I watched 100 episodes of Todd White, you know, to, to study for this. Yet he calls Todd White a Christian and says he's sincere and is a brother in Christ. What's wrong with you people? <laughs> what? No, Todd White is a false teacher and a wolf in sheep's clothing. Now again, I've already made, a, I've made two videos about Mike. You can go look at those if you wish, and that's fine. But please understand that Mike flip-flops on a ton of things. He is not solid and biblically based, even though he does teach some good things. And sadly, most people give him a pass and will defend him tooth and nail. And last but not least, number six is the Bible Project. These guys have their theology all over the board and they're doing damage to the body of Christ by mixing in, just like we've seen before, truth with error. Now here, I'm gonna give you three examples of the Bible Project and things that they teach that are wackadoodle, okay? Number one, they say that Jesus taught mysticism. Oh, really? And when you start talking about elevated levels of consciousness, right, and experiencing uh, the mystical presence of God, but uh, first of all, let me just respond in as n hopefully non-snarky a way as I can. 
Uh, for someone who's like, this sounds like Eastern mysticism or something like that, let us just remember, where did the Jesus movement originate? <laughs> it originated in the East. And I really don't think Jesus was just reciting Bible verses all night long, like on the mountain. I'm sure that he was reciting whole Psalms and that those Psalms were sending his consciousness traversing the universe with his Father in prayer. Are you with me? Second, they say that in Christ there's no gay or straight. <laughs> what? And so if I'm a follower of Jesus and I sense the high calling to not be married, and to give my life, what doesn't, sexual orientation doesn't matter, he's, he's calling me to not have sex with people of the opposite gender or the same gender. It doesn't, he doesn't highlight one as more than the other. Just says sex has its place within the covenant symbol making of the image of God. It's not the only way to symbol in the image of God, but it is that way. In Messiah Jesus, there is no male or female, no slave or free, no Jew or non-Jew, no gay, no straight, just beautiful humans made in the image of God. And thirdly, and this is shocking, they say that hell is made up and is something that humans created. Are you kidding me? Listen to what they say about hell. Whatever hell is, God didn't make it. Hell is something that humans have created. See, just because someone has a YouTube channel, they call themselves Christian, does not mean they teach sound doctrine and doesn't mean that you should be following them. Like I said before, and I was really clear, you guys, that we must, we must test every single thing. First John 4, 1 is clear. Whether it's Jordan Riley, whether it's John MacArthur, Steve Lawson, R.C. Sproul, or anyone that I mentioned in this episode, we must stand for things that line up with God's word. And we must reject those people who water it down, twist it, and sugarcoat it.